If you're looking for the best screen recording apps or softwares for your business or personal life, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to share with you my five favorite ones so that you can hopefully start recording your screen and making videos like this for YouTube or for your business or for whatever. Now I'll caution you that almost all of these tools are paid, but I think that it's worth it if you're making YouTube videos or creating courses or making tutorials or whatever, it's worth having something that actually works really, really well. Now before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. If you're already using some of these screencasting softwares, screen sharing softwares, please let me know in the comments. But my goal is really to create more videos like this, but also other videos that show you the behind the scenes of my life as an entrepreneur, business owner, really running a multiple six figure business so that you can potentially do the same. All right, so let's get started. The first tool I wanna to tell you about is one that I actually used in the very beginning of my business and it used to be free. Then they started charging very, very small amounts. It was like $4 a year or something. Something. like it was something ridiculous and they have since upped their prices to about like four dollars a month so it's still very very inexpensive and I would say if you're on a budget this is probably one of the best tools that you can use it does allow you to record your screen as well as has a video editor inside of it I had never really liked the video editor part I actually don't have this app on my computer anymore but it's called screencast o -Matic. I think the one I had was screencast o 2 which I don't know if there's a difference but you install the software on your computer and you are able to to record anything that you want on there. It's really quite simple. And the thing I like about it is that it does make the mouse, the cursor, a lot more obvious than in some of these other tools. So anytime that you're filming tutorials or something, like I film tutorials sometimes, it does make it a lot easier for people to see what you're clicking on and you don't have to do anything extra for that to happen. So I would say that's a really good starter option if you are looking to film tutorials and are more on a budget. Now the second option and one that I use most frequently is ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow is a Mac only app. So if you're on the PC, unfortunately, there are other options. I believe Camtasia is an option, but I have never used it because I have a, have a Mac computer. But ScreenFlow is awesome. I'm actually gonna tell you a quick tip about ScreenFlow, so don't miss this if you already have ScreenFlow. But you install it, you also have the ability to edit your videos afterwards, you can record your screen, you can have your camera on, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it looks like in just a second. But one thing I wanna mention is that they do update their software about once a year and they release a new version. Now the thing is you do have to pay for the app to work, otherwise you're going to have a watermark. Now I wanna caution you not to update to new versions of the software for at least like until several new versions have, have come out because I made this mistake, I paid for the app, then a little bit later, maybe six months later, they released a new version. And because I already had access to the previous version, I could upgrade and pay maybe 50% off. But I honestly didn't see a lot of differences in the versions. Like there's maybe tiny little tweaks that didn't really affect how I was working with the app in the first place. So my suggestion, if you're gonna go with ScreenFlow, don't upgrade to the new versions. They're usually not that different, but always look like what is new with this tool? Does it make sense for you to upgrade? And I do typically upgrade every like five versions or so, so that I can still be up to date, but not every one where it doesn't even make sense. So just to show you really quickly what this looks like, there's gonna be an app that you see uh, here and you can click record that's gonna record your entire screen or you can click on configure recording That's what I usually go because it allows me to then select a portion of the screen that I actually want to record So first you get to decide what part which monitor you're gonna be recording whether you want to record yourself or not That's the webcam um, which microphone and then you click on this button and it, this is the coolest thing because it's actually going to allow me to record a portion of the screen so if you're doing slides or something and you don't want to record the entire screen this is really really cool so once it's done i click on this button preparing to record if you want to speed it up you just click on it and here we go it's recording i can like move things well i can't do that because i'm on my desktop but and then when you want to finish stop record and then it shows you the uh, the video editor and this is a video editor right right here so you can change things up you can move things around if you want to you can add different call outs so on here there's some settings that will allow you to change some stuff up for example let's do a call out and let's say that i want to blur out a part of the screen so i'll use freehand i'll choose this and let's say I wanna blur this part out because it has my sensitive information. I'm gonna change the opacity and I'm gonna change the blur. And now you can see this part of the screen is blurred out. So this is something that I use a lot with my tutorials as you guys might've noticed. 
Now my third choice is something that I use a lot for specifically live recording. So I love to show my screen during my some of my live calls and my group coaching programs. And I like to connect my camera, the camera that I'm filming on right now, I actually like to connect it to my computer so I can go stream live with this camera with my Canon. And I'm able to do this by using another app that actually allows me to screen record as well. And this app is called Ecamm Live. Now this is probably one of the pricier options because you do have to pay a monthly fee and it is an additional app, but I think it's really valuable if you're going to be streaming live specifically and you want to showcase your screen. You can also record what you're doing on your own. To show you what this looks like, this is the app right here. So I'm going to click on that. And um, currently it's selected to show my screen. I'm actually going to change it to show myself so you can record yourself. Here I am with my webcam um, that's on my computer here. I have two monitors and I can also click on this button and that's the one that will allow me to screencast or screen record various parts of my screen. I can select my primary or secondary display, current application or various applications that are already available. So let's click on Spotify. So it'll show me just that app that I want to record. I can also, um, there's an ability, like if I'm on my mouse and I just go like this, it actually zooms it in. So you have to be really careful when you're on here that you don't do this. Pretty easy. The only thing about this is that it does not record your mouse clicks. It just shows what you're like. It just shows you what you're doing. Um, you can also have yourself on the side, but it's just some extra steps that you have to go through. So it is a little bit more of an advanced option. I would say it is a lot, a little bit more expensive, but I really love it if you're planning on live streaming your screen recording. Now the last two tools are actually very similar to each other. So at first I wanna tell you about probably the more popular one of the two, which actually does have a free version. So this is the one that allows you to record for free up to five minutes. But most of the time, this is an app that is best used if you're using Chrome. I believe you can also record your entire screen as well if you want to, but it is more integrated with Chrome. Same with the other app that I'm about to share with you. And this one is called Loom. So the way it works is you get to log in and you see all the previous videos that you've seen. It's basically just a cloud service. So nothing is being recorded onto your computer, but you can download things and then you can click on new video or you can go right on the bottom right here. But you also have a Chrome extension that you can use that is right here. And from there, it's gonna ask you to use the camera. It's gonna ask you what your microphone is, all that good stuff. Once it loads up, which it might take a little bit, you can start recording and it's gonna start recording the Chrome browser that you're in. The cool thing about this too, is that it makes it really easy to share. And I would say Loom has been specifically created for easy sharing with your team or your clients, which is what I usually use it for. I use it for clients and you can just grab your links, you can grow to, you know, your video, you can click on share really easily and share it with people or grab the copy link. This, that's what I usually do. So it makes it really nice and easy from that perspective, which is pretty cool. And I did just look this up and it does look like you can actually download the Loom app onto your computer. I simply don't use it then this way, but you are able to download the desktop app and you can do it for your phone as well. So this is a really great option, I would say, especially if you're planning on sharing your screen recording videos with team members or clients just to make everything a lot easier. And the last option is its competitor, which is Vimeo Pro. So Vimeo Pro, I think probably came out with this option, which is very similar to Loom. And they basically made it a free option for people who already have Vimeo Pro, which I do, to allow you to screen record and share things with your team members, your clients, and things like that. I would say that Vimeo Pro is not as robust as Loom. It isn't really made for sharing as easily as Loom is. I personally don't like mixing up my regular videos that I like to upload into Vimeo along with screen sharing things that are just for clients. I don't like that personally, but if you're looking to be more on a budget and you already have Vimeo Pro, that's a great option. Now, what is Vimeo? Vimeo is a video hosting platform. It is not like YouTube in the sense that you can embed your videos in the course hosting platform like Kajabi or Podia or Thrivecart Learn, which is what I talked about. This is actually where I host my videos for my programs primarily because people can't go with like with YouTube, you can go and like see what the video is. You can somehow save the link, even if you haven't purchased it or, you know, it just makes it really easy to share. And that's not what we want if somebody's purchasing your product and they're getting videos as a part of that purchase. So I really like using Vimeo for that. And now you have this ability to also use Vimeo Pro screen recording. So with Vimeo Pro, it is also an extension that you can see right here. And when it is, you can see how similar it looks 
it's exactly right here. You can select whether the screen, camera only, or both. And if it's camera only, it will load up uh, right there. So here I am, right? So this will record just this part. And it's pretty much the same thing, but it's for the price of one. So same if you wanna be recording your full, your full screen or your current app only or current tab only, your little face would be right there. So it's very, very similar to Loom. Just the organization of it is a little bit different, but it is cheaper. You don't need another app, especially if you already are paying for Vimeo Pro. So those are my five favorites. Let me know which one you like the most and which one you have already used or are planning on using in the comments. I look forward to seeing that. And I look forward to seeing your suggestions for future videos. If there's something you're struggling with in terms of your business or you're curious about anything, let me know below and I'll see you in the next video.